We'll now look at the greatest common divisor. And when we're looking at the greatest common divisor of two numbers, we are going to abbreviate this by GCD of a comma b. So what exactly does this mean? It is the largest integer d such that d divides a and d divides b. So it's exactly what it says. The greatest, it is the largest possible number that works. The divisor part means it needs to divide both numbers. In the common, it does have to be common and actually divide both. So it's the greatest number that divides both of our two numbers. And sometimes these can be easy to find, but other times they might not be. So we'll do a few examples of different ways we can find these for more complicated problems. The first one we'll do is the GCD of 36 and 48. And this one can be one that we can probably figure out pretty easily, which is 12. 36 obviously does not go into 48, so that's too big. The next largest divisor of 36 would be 18, which doesn't go into 48. The next one would be 12, which they do have in common. Here, the GCD of 11 and 32 well, the only things that divide into 11 are 1 and 11. The only one of those that also divides into 32 is 1. And this is actually has a special name, which is called relatively prime. Relatively prime just means that their GCD is 1. They are prime relative to each other. They have nothing in common. Another way we can do this is using prime factorizations. Well, what is the prime factorization of 240? Well, it is 24 times 10. So there's a place to start. 24 is 4 times 6. 10 is 2 times 5. 4 is 2 squared, so I now have 3 2's times my 5, and then 6 is 2 times 3. So 2 to the 4th times 3 times 5. 400 is 4 times 100. We know that 4 is 2 squared. We also already found the prime factorization of 100, so we get 2 to the 4th times 5. 5 squared. Now if I want to use this to find the GCD, essentially what I'm looking is what they have in common. They have a 2 to the 4th in common and a 5 in common. So therefore my GCD is 2 to the 4th times 5, which is 80. So we can use the factorizations to find the GCD. We just need to first find the prime factorizations and see what they have in common. However, depending on your example, this may actually be quite complicated to find these prime factorizations. So we're going to look at one other method. And this method is known as Euclid's algorithm. And Euclid's algorithm depends on my division algorithm. So this was the division algorithm. If I do a divided by b, I get a q for a quotient, and then r is the remainder. So essentially what Euclid's algorithm says is that the GCD of a and b is the same thing as the GCD of b and r. So if I take my two numbers and divide them, I can replace the larger of the two with the remainder. And this will just give us progressively smaller and smaller numbers until this is easier to compute. Let's start with this one. I want to find the GCD of 210 and 45. So I'm going to start by dividing. 45 goes into 210 four times. And then we have a remainder of 30. So now I have the GCD of, I replace the bigger number with my remainder, and then the other number stays. 
At this point, you may be able to figure this out, but we're going to take it another step. 30 can go into 45 once with 15 left over. So now my GCD, I replace the larger of the two, which is now 45, with my new remainder. And 15 actually goes directly into 30. So therefore, I can easily determine that my GCD here is 15. One more example. Let's do 97 and 20. Well, 20 goes into 97 four times with 17 left over. So I now have the GCD of, I'll replace the larger number with 17, and then I have 20. And at this point, we should be able to see that these are relatively prime. The GCD is one. In particular, we should be able to pick that up because 17 is a prime number and it doesn't go in evenly into 20. So the only possible answers here would have been one or 17 and 17 doesn't work. Therefore, it must be one.